Let us open our Bibles in Isaiah 49, verse 13 to 16. Sing for joy, O heavens, and exult, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing. For the Lord has comforted his people, and you have compassion on his afflicted. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. But God said, can a woman forget her nursing child that should have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Your woes are continually before me. And let me read another one here, Isaiah 6, 6, from 10 to 14. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. And all who love her, rejoice with her in joy. It's talking about Jerusalem as a child. And you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her counseling breast that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious abundance. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse, you shall be carried upon her rib, and bounced upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass, and the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servant, and he shall show his indignation against, against his enemies. Amen. Lord, I pray that this, the word is going to come alive today in this very significant day, Lord. I pray that we all going to receive a revelation that you brought fresh for this very time. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning I want to talk about the one who cares. Amen. Do you need to be cared? Do you need some love? Do you need some encouragement? I want to talk about God, the one who cares. But I want to use today the figure of the mother, this picture of this divine contribution, this divine gift that we received. I could say that there is a divine nature in mother's love. Amen? There is no perfect mother, don't take me wrong, okay? There is no perfect humans. Jill Churchill said, there is no way to be a perfect mother, but a million ways to be a good one. Yes, and I know mothers, they are always good. Even those who fail sometimes, they're always trying to give them best. There is something so pure within the mother's heart that it mirrors the love that God has for us. And I want to somehow walk through this morning very quickly because I want to make sure that you have a good time with your children. There is one Christian leader that once said, no love comes closer to approximating the pure love of Jesus Christ than the selfless love 
of a devoted mother. No love is closer to manifest God's love than the love of a mother that gives everything to her child. In fact, there are numbers of times in scriptures where God is compared to a mother. God's actions are compared to the one of a mother. God's care for us is compared to that of a mother. God's heart is compared to a mother's heart. I will not read with you, but I'm going to just mention a few verses that are going to remind you and myself about how God used the mother figure to manifest his love. Matthew 23, 37 says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I have desired to gather you, your children together as a mother hen gathers her brood, brood or brood under her wings. Hosea 13, 8, God fears his love is compared to a mother bear robbed of her cubs. In the book of Deuteronomy, God is spoken of as a mother, eagle who is teaching her eagles to fly, or eaglets to fly. She stirs up her nest, fluttering over her wings, and bears them on her wing. So the Lord lead Israel. As the same scripts that we read today in Isaiah that God says as a mother comfort her children. So I comfort you. So there is plenty of Bible verse that God will compare himself to a mother to manifest his love and I was thinking about that because moms and dads, we have different ways to manifest our love. It's not one of the other, amen? It's not one of the other. It's both together, complementing each other. Sometimes the father is going to show his love being a bit more direct, more keeping the boundaries more sometimes leading the way, no, you need to do that. But in the same way, no, in an in, in a opposite way, but in the same way, in direction, the mother is going to be more kind and soft. She's going to have the hug. She's going to have the case, son. Let us talk about it. Again, I want to emphasize here, it's not one or the other. Both, they work together, Amen. Sometimes the father is the first one to say, you know what, as you grow, if you don't learn, if you don't help, you need to find your place. Mommy will always say, you know what, don't rush to live. <laughs> your bed is going to be here. Ten years late or later, the kids are already at uni, finished it, is married, but the bed is still the same because the bed is still belong to the hair baby. This is mother's heart. So, I just want to make us to understand that God used the mother figure to manifest his love too. And today as we celebrate, I want to go through this. And one of the ways that God will mirror his love for us is through offering his unconditional love. And I'm not here just talking about the mother. I'm talking about all of us using the, the mother figure. I want to talk to all of us. And the first thing God is going to offer to us is this, his unconditional love. The Apostle John wrote, we love God because he loved us first. Amen. 
Just like a parent God will love us in this, with all his heart. The Apostle Paul taught that God's love is a gift of grace. It's something that we can earn ourselves. It simply comes from God. Amen? That's why we can never lose God's love because we did never earn it. He loved us first. His love is unconditional. Christine Norrup said once, no one in your life will ever love you as your mother does. There is no love as pure, unconditional, and as strong as mother's love. Mother loves unconditionally. And I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you, mother, today that loves your children. I know you love them more than you ever thought you could. I know sometimes you mothers, they don't have what you give, but you're still loving. Sometimes you're empty yourself. But because you are made by love, you carry on loving your children. I want to honor you this morning. As I talk about God's love, I want to honor you too. Because you have been giants. You have been the best. You have been a gift of God's worth. There is a Jewish proverb that I don't agree with, but I get the heart. This proverb says, because God knew he couldn't be everywhere, he sent mothers all over the place. Of course, we know God can be everywhere. Nevertheless, he has sent mothers all over the place to manifest his love and care. Amen. So thank you, mother. And can we just put our hands together to our mothers today once again in Jesus' name? Let me share you a little bit about how you love and how Christ loves us. In the early days of my ministry, my late teens, I was on the end of my teens, I engaged, I used to be part of prison ministry. Yes, I used to go to prisons to minister the gospel to prisoners. And don't take me wrong, but I've been, I've seen the worst of the society. I've been there many times to see the marginalized people, the criminals. I've seen killers. I've seen abusers. I see or I saw bank robbers on the same room as I was. As a young man, sometimes fragile, my understanding. Sometimes very scared. I was 17, 18 years old when I started to do. Which I started to go to prisons. I ministered to some men that sometimes they couldn't be in the same room. They had to be in a different cell behind bars because they are too dangerous. But they were there hearing the gospel. And let me tell you, the most of them, they deserve to be there. The most of the people that I met in prison, they deserve to be there. And if I could mention some of the things I heard there, probably you'd say they deserve to be there until death. But let me tell you, and I went there many, many times. And let me tell you, the most of the visitors of this what society would call today monsters. Do you know who they were? Mothers. Everybody hating those guys. Everybody want to see those guys incarcerated. Everybody they want to see those guys out of the life of a society. But you know what? Mothers. And the most of them very aware. They knew. I know my child is guilty. I know my son is guilty. But I'm still his mother. 
I'm quite sure you know or have met a mother that nearly every week gets what she has, bakes a cake, gets some fruits, sometimes without much money. She has worked the whole week. But even though through her sadness, she's going to drive to see her child in a prison. Isn't that how God loves us? Romans 5 says, God demonstrates his love for us in a way that even when we are sinners, he died for us. Even when we are full of mistakes, God died for us. He was the one that came to see us in the nightmare that we were. We are lost. We are desperate. We are under condemnation. We are going towards hell. But from heaven, God loved us so much that he sent his only son. Just like the mothers many times they're going to do, they're going to get whatever they have. God sent his only son to die for you and for me to make you what you are today. But don't take me wrong. None of us deserved. But like a mother, God left heaven, this holy place. And come to this place called, mass, called Messy Earth. This week, you know, our Bible teaching were there, teaching about the holiness of God, how God is holy, and how He cannot engage with any sin. On the cross, Jesus said, Father, why have you forsaken me? If you have been to the home group, you'd know the answer today. You know why God couldn't bear to be with Jesus that moment? Because my sin and your sin were over him. And God, you never touch sin. God, you never engage with anything that's not holy. But because he loved us, he sent his son to die on a cross, to shed his blood. And today, when God comes to be with us, what he sees is the blood of his son all over us. You know what is called? Love. He doesn't look at my sin anymore, but he sees the sacrifice of the firstborn. So, it doesn't matter what you do today, there is forgiveness for you. Because like a mother, hallelujah. I know, maybe in your homes different. I don't know, so many times when I'm there and my son probably is the one to start to get it. I'm going to get him, I'm going to... But mom is going to be there to say, yes, you can get him, but get him with love. <laughs> get him with love. I read a statement made by a mother that says, <laughs> pay attention. I finally realized that the times when my children are being most unlovable and make me to want to pull all my hairs out, those are the times when they need my love the most. <laughs> When you think, ah, I cannot deal with this kid anymore. As a mother, you realize that is when they need you. They need you there. So if the first thing God shows through a mother is this unconditional love, the second thing I want to share here is that through a mother, God is going to show a sacrificial love. There is an illustration. Pay attention to this one here. I need to pay attention myself. But it's to do in a school environment. And there is a mathematics teacher. And you're going to bring a, a, a problem for the kids to sort out. 
So he starts reading this. Pay attention. Suppose your mother had an apple pie and there were ten of you at the table. Your mom and your dad and the eight children. How much of the pie would each get? Did you hear? Ten of you on the table have a apple pie. This apple pie needs to be divided. How much would you have from the pie? One-tenth. One-tenth. You have the right answer. But let me tell you what the boy said. A little boy he stood up and said, a ninth. No, said the teacher. Listen carefully. I'll go over again. There are ten of you at the table. Think in terms of fraction. The boy replied, I think about fraction, but also I'm thinking about my mother. She would say that she didn't want any pie, so the rest of us could have some more. Isn't like that. In Brazil, we have a say, I tried to translate this morning with my wife. I would try to, maybe it will not make sense to you, but says, a mother will never die by a choking. Choke? By choking. Because she always divides and share what she has before she eats. The fathers, you go for the big piece, don't you? <laughs> Mothers, they're going to cut in piece. They make sure the kids, they eat first. A mother's love is sacrificial. God's love is sacrificial too. Among the twelve disciples, none understood better than John. Listen to some of his words. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Love gives and gives sacrificially. And once again, I want to say to you, thank you, mothers. Thank you. Thank you. Because so many times in tears, in pain, if your child cries out, you stand up, you don't think twice. John 3 John 15, 13, sorry, says, No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. How many times you lay down your life to a child? But let me tell you, more than you, Christ lays his life down for you every single day. It doesn't matter the mistakes you make. It doesn't matter the failures. Sometimes you look to the mirror, and let me tell you, because this happens to me, and I'm going to be bold enough to share my heart because I think it represents some of you. So many times you look at the mirror of life, and what you see is a loser. You look back into your history. You look back into your situation and say, you know what? I'm not making it. I have failed again. I promised I wouldn't do that again. Have you been there? Last time. Next day you've done the same. I will not make this mistake again. Two weeks later, there you are in the same pit. And what you can see, on, honestly, you go to the mirror, you see yourself as a loser. You see yourself as somebody that doesn't have what takes. You see yourself as somebody that will not be able to break through. And you are... So low that you're not able to fulfill the expectations of those that you believe you should fulfill. Sometimes as parents you go there and you see, I'm not a good mother, I'm not a good child, I'm not a good father. As a Christian, sometimes the devil is going to try to put fingers on you. But let me tell you in Jesus' name as a mother, Christ says to you, there is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
And as a mother, God is always there saying, you know what? Stand up and let us do again. Let us try again. I'm going to cook for you once again. Sometimes I'm there, furious, you know. And Mamos arrives with a little gift to the son. What? She want to make sure that he understands that she loves him. And that we love him. Today, the message I have for you, not just honoring the love of a mother, but I also to tell you that far beyond the love of a mother is the love of God for you. He will never fail you. If your mother cares for you, even much more, God loves and cares for you. And sometimes as a mother too, you're going to make sure that you are shaken. Sometimes there is this spiritual correction. And I know in this country, we don't like it anymore. But forgive me. But sometimes there is some spiritual smack you. I remember the old days. And if you think I'm preaching violence, you are completely wrong. But I'm happy if you don't accuse me of anything. But I remember my mother, and this is how I call her as a hero in my life. Because growing up in a very difficult circumstance, in different area, difficult area, I could easily be a drug dealer or a somebody that would be addicted to drugs today. I was surrounded by them, by my door, by my neighborhood. My father was not there, but my mother stood in God's heart and she stood there for me every single day, being kind and being hard. She was there ministering me love. Say, you will not have that today. And sometimes, let me tell you in Jesus' name, being a not man, I could be in prison today. But you know what has saved me? God's love through the stick of my mother. Yeah! I'm not here preaching violence in any way. I'm talking about correction, love. Because the Bible says, God correct those who he love. He discipline. Mother, I praise you when you stand there and say, I love you, son. And because I love you, I will not let you go. You will not go out tonight. Because I know the devil has for you out there. I appreciate you. I love you. you stand in your base. Don't leave that. Because you're not there just by your name. You're there by the name of God. You're there in the name of Jesus. You're protecting those that God has called you to protect. So young man, if you have anything against your mother because she doesn't let you go, let me tell you, she's the manifestation of God's love. Appreciate the old woman. Appreciate, care for her. Because probably she was one of the best pictures of God's love on earth. And I know, and I'm going to speak to the young men because I have fewer here today. When you start to have a deeper voice, I don't know when they get it. <laughs> One day they are babies, next day they are. I thought my son was in the bedroom. I think there is a man there. The day before was, come for dinner. Yes, I'm going. Next day, come for dinner. Yes, I'm going. So who is there? But when this transition starts to happen, we as young men, we believe we can control our mothers. Let me tell you, don't go over there. They have a power that you don't have. But appreciate it. Appreciate because like as God, she'll be there to love and to protect you. And let me tell you, she can kill because of you. This is the reason that my wife doesn't go to football anymore. Because normally she can shout aloud than anybody else in the field. So there I am, just kind of, come on, son. My wife would be, come on! Look at my son! 
No, it's normal. This is football. No, look. This is what they see mothers doing there in football. Because they protect, they love, they care. They understand. A mother love is sacrificial. Let me finish with this one here. This is a true story, okay? Some years ago, I read of a mother and a baby in Poland who were in a very serious car accident. It was a late night in a dead of winter. And there in Poland is cold, isn't it? 30 degrees, negative, sometimes 40. The car slide off the road and down a step embankment. The mother's legs were broken. She couldn't carry her baby to safety. And she doubted that anyone would find them in time. So she took off some of her outer clothing and used them to wrap her baby to protect the child from the cold. The next morning, they found the mother partially clothed with her body wrapped around the baby. The mother had died. But the baby was alive. It's not just in Poland that this has happened in Africa. The mothers will die first because they're going to feed their children first. We have heard many stories when there's earthquake where the mother took over the children. They're going to put themselves in a situation that they're going to lose their life to allow the kids to live. Isn't that what God loves is for us? He gave his only son to die on a cross to make you and I to live in the fragility of our journey in the weakness of our journeys, with all the mistakes and failures we had, this beautiful God sent his only son to make sure that you and I would succeed. So today, as we celebrate Mother's Day and we celebrate the love of God, let me tell you, God dreams and has planned success to you. My plans and not to harm you. But they are to prosper you. And even if I need to send my son to die in your place, you will succeed. God has blessed, with, with, has blessed us with our mothers to remind us that somebody is always there caring for us. So as I honor today the mother, I want to pack up here saying, God loves you. Maybe you don't care too much about him, but he does love you every single day of your life. Maybe as you do with your mother, time to time you forget that she exists. As you go, you just remember that she's alive when you need some food or clothing or help. Sometimes you do the same to God. But let me tell you, today, just like a mother, God's looking for a deep relationship with you. Your mother cannot go where you go, but your God, your father will go with you. He said he'll never forsake you. he never fail you. And even when your mother fails you, God doesn't fail you. Because he has a plan for you. Despite all the trouble and hardship that you arrive here, your pain, your blooding, your tears, the nightmares that you have. Let me tell you, God loves you. And some of you say, my mother is not even here. Let me tell you, your God will never forsake you. He's here today to comfort you. And he brought you here today to be part of his nest, to teach you just like the mother wiggle. She's going to help you. He's going to help you. First of all, you're going to care, strengthen you, feed you. But in due time, you're going to say, young man, young woman, it's time to fly. I have 
eternity. I have plans for you. Today, you came here for me to tell you that God has plans for you to fly and to fly high. Just like the mother we go, you're going to help his children. So has your mother and even more. God is doing the same for you. He is never short. And let me tell you, sometimes moms, you say, I would love you to become a lawyer. And you say, I would love to be a footballer. And she will, even though sometimes against her will, she will be there for you. But let me tell you, the plans that God has for you, they are the best. Don't deny it. Don't reject it. Because what God has set for you, Is success for eternity. Let us stand up together in Jesus' name.